Hello and welcome to History in 7 Fact, the history side of this channel. Before the Industrial Revolution, agriculture was by far the main occupation for the vast majority of people. There were no machines around and most of the work was done either by hand or by using rudimentary tools. But there were some exceptions. There was technology around and in some cases it was quite advanced. One example is the furnace. Some furnaces of medieval Europe managed to produce high-quality iron comparable to that produced by big foundries of the 19th century. The monasteries of the Middle Ages were powerful and rich settlements. Most were located in rural areas and thus benefited greatly from the abundance of resources coming from the surrounding farms, dairies, forests, orchards and apiaries. The work was done by peasants who smoked the meat, made bread and ale and collected honey, mushrooms and weeds. The monks were the scholars of the era who studied the Bible and prayed, then wrote countless manuscripts and mingled in local politics. But in many such monasteries a noise broke the peaceful silence frequently, the noise that sledgehammers made as they were shaping large pieces of iron into useful tools. Skilled blacksmiths were using advanced furnaces to produce iron at an almost industrial scale. You wouldn't think that the hermits and monks of the Middle Ages contributed to the founding of heavy industry, but they did. Monks and nuns played many roles, but perhaps the most significant and far-reaching role was that of keepers of knowledge. While knights underwent special education that prepared them for the battlefield and the court and artisans learned their craft from their masters, the contemplative life of a monk provided the perfect setting in which to learn to read and write. Inevitably, they came across knowledge that would be helpful to everyday life and thus, although progress was very slow in those times, it wasn't completely stagnant. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the church had a complete monopoly on education for about four centuries. In most big universities, nearly all scholars, teachers and students were clergymen of some sort. Among them were the monks of the Order of Cistercians. They were the driving force of the advancement in metallurgy and its spread on the continent. It was founded in 1098 in the Abbey of Citeaux, or Cistercium in Latin, near Dijon in France, and continued to exist to this day. By 1323, these French monks were using water-driven bellows, or air blowers, to raise the temperature in the oven to up to 1500 degrees Celsius. And about half a century later, the blast furnace was invented. The Industrial Revolution that started in Britain indeed brought about several key inventions that propelled humanity into the modern age. The blast furnace is considered to be one of those inventions. But it seems that this piece of technology was already invented centuries earlier. Such furnaces already existed in the Middle Ages and could have produced iron on a large scale that could almost rival the output of 19th century factories. And this isn't that surprising if you think about it. In the 12th and 13th centuries, the demand for iron was great. Weapons and armors of medieval knights were all made of iron, but the increasing number of castles, abbeys, churches and chapels led to an even larger increase in iron demand. Each construction site had its own forge, where they built chains, clamps, nails and everything else needed. Faced with such demands, progress was pretty much unavoidable. The Cistercians became experts in metallurgy and wealthy. When King Henry VIII disbanded the monasteries of England, he greatly benefited from the wealth and knowledge left behind by the Cistercians of Rivaux Abbey in North Yorkshire. He also ordered the detailed inventory of all monasteries, a list that still exists today. On this list, a forge on the western side of Rivo Abbey is mentioned, and this was probably one of the most advanced forges of the time. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you something. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Ok, now we can move on to the next fact. On this inventory list, there was an oven at Laskill, 6 kilometers from the abbey and a forge right next to Rivo. 
Professor Jerry McDonald from Bradford University studied both areas and found remains of iron and ash at both sites. He concluded that the monks were already working iron in 1132 when they founded the abbey. In the soil around Rivaux, there's ash and iron remains that can still be analyzed to find out how they were made. McDonald found that these remains were made traditionally using a technique called direct reduction, a solid state process which reduces iron oxides to metallic iron at temperatures below their melting point. This technique is slow and consumes a lot of fuel, as the metal needs to be heated and reheated hours on end to reduce oxidation. But the ash found at Laskill was different. It contains less iron, meaning that the monks found a more efficient way to extract most of the metal from minerals. When the professor started to dig more, he found the remains of the forge, a water canal and a water mill, all of which were used to create this high quality iron. The abbey's position was excellent for a forge. The hills in the area have a lot of iron minerals, and forests that existed at the time provided the wood that could be turned into charcoal. Laymen or lay brothers provided the necessary workforce to gather these resources. The water canal channeled the water to a wheel that in turn operated the bellow, which provided a constant stream of oxygen, thus raising the temperatures greatly. All of this turned the monks into merchants that sold horseshoes and cobnails, scissors, hammers, chisels or simply iron and cast iron ingots. In technical terms, the forge at Rivo was probably an advanced direct reduction forge, marking the transition from heating and hammering to obtain iron to directly melting it at temperatures above 1530 degrees Celsius. This forge was built at the beginning of the 16th century and thanks to the constant stream of oxygen provided by air blowers, the fire could in fact reach temperatures above 1500 degrees. By 1570, this charcoal furnace could produce about one ton of high quality iron per day, something very few if any other forges on the planet could achieve. After the abbey was closed by Henry VIII in 1538, the forge continued to produce iron. The Earl of Rutland had taken into possession the abbey, while the monks fled persecution by retreating to the continent, as England just became a Protestant nation. The lay brothers, though, remained, and the new owners probably used their knowledge to continue to operate the forge. They continued to produce iron up until the 17th century, when all records of the forge disappear. Not because it wasn't productive, but because it ran out of fuel. So much iron was produced that the forests that provided the charcoal were all chopped down in just a century. It would take another century to match the quality and output of the Rivo Forge. In 1709, Abraham Darby decided to use coke instead of coal in blast furnaces, and thus propelled Britain as the biggest and most successful producer of iron and steel in Europe. The monks and their heritage were forgotten, but nevertheless, their contribution to the modern world was real and undoubtedly significant. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further, on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.